Yo, what's up everyone, uh, Dawson here, and I know I haven't made a video in like three months. That's gonna start changing uh, right after this week, because this week I'm gonna be on a uh, church trip. Um, in my church, yeah, we're actually going to North Carolina, yeah. Um, do some fun stuff there, you know. Then I might start posting every other weekend, like I used to. Um, but anyway, uh, today, it's just gonna be like one of those telling you guys one of my uh, like my testimony. All right, so like so we got this here. So we're actually gonna tell you. Um, so y'all give me a minute. So a lot of you guys probably don't even know. I have a disease called TSC, and it's short for tuberous sclerosis. Um, and every day I struggle with things like bone aching, um, you know, like, or like whatever like that. My story's pretty simple. It starts off um, in 2011, yes. When I was about five, um, I was not your normal five-year-old. Um, had seizures every day. Yes, every day. Um, I had like 10 seizures a day, which you can imagine was pretty dang bad. Um, November 2012, when I was about six, I got diagnosed with TSC and tuberous sclerosis. In November 2012, I entered a hospital and surgeons greeted me. I was, of course, pretty shy and nervous knowing that something huge was about to happen to me and was going to change my life forever. Legit. Surgeons took me to room 307 or something and we waited for other surgeons to come. It just took about 15, 30 minutes. As soon as they entered my room, I was a little freaked out. Yeah. I was about to go into this big, huge machine I had never seen before. This machine was called a MRI machine. They told me everything was going to be just fine, and I believed them. Seven minutes later, they brought me to the MRI machine and told me to lay down on the MRI bed. When I was on the MRI bed, it was pretty uncomfortable until they put warm blankets over him. Uh, guessing that it was gonna be a bit before they were finished with me. Right before, right before that, they slid me into this huge MRI machine. They lifted me, lifted my left arm up and put a big rubber, um, big rubber band over this part of my arm um, and they checked to see if my veins were doing pretty good um, were there and they were they checked my veins and they stuck a needle into my arm right here like this right there um, another surgeon came with three medium sized tubes and filled all three of them up they're about that big, guys. Just for you guys to estimate. With my blood. And I can tell y'all, I cannot give my blood to anyone. Mm -mm. You may ask, why is that? I will tell you right now. Because you might have to go through the same stuff I went through. When they got finished drawing my blood, they stuck another needle in. Into my arm. The difference this time was that it had anesthesia in it going through it, which was going to put me right to sleep. <laughs> give you, try to give you guys some, like, what it was like. Um, I didn't know I was going to fall asleep because I was literally a six-year-old, yes, six-year-old kid going through all this difficult stuff. Two hours later... I woke up, where am I, um, and they 
told me to stand up. As soon as I did, I almost fell over. Uh, let's see. Another surgeon caught me and put me in a wheelchair. I had gotten into the wheelchair and moved to the surgeon bed, surgery bed. I was so scared I started to pain, or started freaking out. But they once again said, everything is going to be just fine. And at a certain moment, I felt really calm. <laughs> they set me on the surgery bed and they put a weird gas mask over my face. As soon as they did, they turned the pump on, anesthesia began to enter my body. And just as I was falling asleep, Sherzen said, stay with us, stay with us Dawson, stay with us. I knew those words were going to help me. And when they said those words, I began to feel dead. I began to feel dead, but alive at the same time. But I was. Yeah, but I was alive. Doesn't that sound so strange to you guys? Yes, that's to me. Well, that's what anesthesia will do to you. <clears throat> when I was asleep, my soul rose out of my body. And I could see my head getting worked on. Surgeons, which was the most crazy thing I've ever seen in my life. People call me fake. Other people believe me. When they got done with the surgery, I had to stay in the hospital for like three more weeks. People came to visit all the time. Uh, one thing I remember is that one time my Uncle Rhett came to visit me and we took pics. Um, I'm actually glad we did because a couple years ago he had a heart attack. Yeah. Um, and to this day, that thought still comes to my mind. On the fourth week, I finally got out. But they had to put wires. They had to put wires on my all over my head right there. Uh, I've had a photo I would show you guys, but I'm gonna show you these photos in a little bit. Um, but yeah, all over my head because of my brain surgery. Some of you guys don't know, but that scar right there is actually where they split my head open. The, uh, um, all right, let's get back to, to me telling you. This isn't a story I made up. This is true, all that stuff. I had to wear these wires over my head for a month. Mm -hmm. A month, guys. After that... It was kind of hard to breathe, so they gave me a uh, oxygen mask with a dinosaur, or an oxygen machine with a dinosaur mask so I could breathe. I had to wear that for about one, two years. And when I was seven years old, everything was over for my brain surgery. And unfortunately, I missed two years of school. When I was younger, like after my brain surgery, after all of my surgeries, after all of my surgeries, I still had to get blood work every month, which I was starting to get used to. Yes, uh, you know I used to freak out over these needles. Um, you know nowadays I'm just like, go ahead, and I just go. And that, that certain tactic helps me. A uh, uh, blood doctor um, told me to do that, and it was pretty. It's actually actually helps pretty good. Um, I'm now almost 16 years old, and I take a lot of medicine, being BioCleanse, Ease, uh, Probiotic, Affinitor, Chemo, which makes my legs, arms, and all this stuff hurt. Um, still get blood tests every year. To this day, I still remember getting brain surgery and staying at the Ronald McDonald House. And I wrote about this because I want people to know everything is going to be just fine, you know. I feel God did this to me. He's using me to show you guys, even if you have a disease, you can get through it all. Like, um, 
legit like I was sitting in church today and the pastor was like hey um, God uses the sickened to um, you know like show people that God can do anything yes um, legit he can do anything I'll pop up some photos, but we're actually going to read a verse here. Um, so, yes, if you guys will pop up to uh, page, or er, hold up. Deuteronomy 19.13. Yes, Deuteronomy 19.13. This says 19.1. Deuteronomy 13. Or 19.13. Um, it says, You shall be blameless before the Lord your God. We're going to skip 14.15. Here we go. 19.15. The Lord your God will raise you up Will, will raise up for you a prophet like me from your midst, from your breathing, brethren, him you shall hear. He will answer back. It might not be right that second, but he will answer back. He hears you. He wants to help you. Um, and he hates seeing you feel sad, depressed, um, all this stuff. Now, um, that is, that one, actually, go, go to, um, to Corinthians 1. Are we, are we beginning to praise ourselves again? Are we beginning to be selfish, judgmental, um, you know, not not telling people about who he really is. We need to step up our game. Outer appearance. It's not gonna. God doesn't care about outer appearance as long as you you tell people who God really is. Do we really know who God is? Go to um, Matthew 5 44. Love your enemies, even don't have hatred within one another. Um, Philippians, Philippians 4 13. I can do all things with through Christ who strengthens me. Yes, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When Satan tempts you. Don't let him win, okay? Remember, God loves you. Jesus is God. Trust him for everything. Repent and trust in God. Or you, sh you would want to go for it. If that sin is bad enough, you shall pluck out your eye. For it is better to go to heaven with one eye than to go to hell with both. So, it's hell with two Anyway, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. But, um, see you guys later. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, you know, uh, hope you liked my testimony. Uh, see y'all guys next video. It might be, um, you know, today again. I don't know, but see y'all later. Peace.